Hello, I'm Derek Walker. I'm the pastor of the Oxford Bible Church. And today we're looking at the gospel of Christ, which is the power of God unto salvation. And we're exploring the gospel so that we can know this power for ourselves and so that we can know how to release this power of salvation to others. And uh, we've been seeing in this series that to discover the essence of the gospel, the power of God unto salvation for all people, uh, we've got to look at the gospel that Jesus himself preached. And that's the starting point. And uh, we've been studying Luke chapter 4, where we get the most information about what Jesus preached. Let's read that now from Luke 4, verse 16 to 21. It says that Jesus came to Nazareth, where he'd been brought up, and as was his, his custom, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath, and as he stood up to read... And the book of Isaiah, the prophet, was handed to him. He opened the book, and he found where it was written. And this is what he chose as his text, is Isaiah chapter 61. And he started reading. And he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And this was a prophecy of the Messiah who when he would come would bring God's power of salvation would be upon him. God would send him with this saving power. And uh, this prophecy was one of the famous prophecies of the Messiah. And everyone's listening to this passage and they're thinking, yes, one day the Messiah will come and this will be fulfilled. Well, Jesus closed the book and sat down and the eyes of everyone in the synagogue was fixed on him. And he began to say to them, and this was the summary of his message, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. This shocked them because he was saying, I am that Messiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me now for your salvation. He brought it into the now. It's no longer something we're looking forward, forward to. It is now fulfilled. And this is the definitive passage on the gospel. It tells us what Jesus preached. And it has the keys that we need to understand the gospel. And we've been looking, and we're looking at three major keys to the gospel. We've seen so far in this series the first two keys. And today we're going to go on to the third key. The first key was, what is the gospel? Well, the gospel that Jesus preached, the good news was... God's power is on me to save you, to heal you, to set you free. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. It's fulfilled now. It's here now for you. You didn't just need to come to me and receive that power for yourself. That is the gospel. It's the word of his power. Then last week we saw the second key, which I call the power of his word. God's power is actually made present to the hearers by the very words of the gospel as they are proclaimed. Let's just talk about that for a minute. Let's see what that means for us. We have the power of the Spirit within us, but we only release it to others through by speaking the words of the gospel. And we need to speak them with conviction and with faith. Because as we speak them, we release the power of God for those people. Conviction is when we are sure that what we're saying is right, is correct. But when we are speaking God's word, we can speak with something with more than just conviction. When we're speaking God's word and we know it, we can not only speak with conviction but with faith because we know that God's power is in his word. And so that when we speak his word, we are releasing God's power to the people who are listening. Wow. So the more faith, the more boldness that you speak the gospel, the more of God's power is released. And as so as we speak the words of the gospel, we, be, we can believe that God is speaking through us and that the power of his spirit is flowing through us to them, through our words. The spirit of God is moving with our words because they're not our words, really. They're God's words. And God's spirit always moves with his word, confirming his word. Hallelujah. And so our ability to speak the words of the gospel with clarity, with accuracy, with conviction, with faith, that determines the power that's released, the fruit and the fruit that's produced. 
And so we need to know the gospel so we can share the gospel and release the power of God. So it's good for us to study the gospel and understand it as best we can. Well, now we come to the third key. And this is the key I've been looking forward to come to. And this is a revelation in from Luke chapter 4 about what the gospel really is. And this key is to do with the year of Jubilee. And as I was studying the gospel in Luke chapter 4, I come to realize this, and I've never heard anyone actually say this, but what I've come to see is that the gospel is nothing more and nothing less than the fulfillment of the year of Jubilee. That's a far-reaching statement, and I want to explore that now uh, in the next uh, couple of programs. You see, everything in the New Testament is already based on what's in the Old Testament. And many times things are just briefly mentioned in the New Testament, and we're expected to know what that's all about. For instance, that Jesus is our Passover lamb. If you've not read the Old Testament, you don't know what that's, what that's talking about. But God expects you, because that's God's book. He's already revealed everything about the Passover lamb in detail in the Old Testament. And so all the information is given in the Old Testament, and often the New Testament just points out how Christ fulfilled that and brought it into reality. And that's exactly the way it is with the gospel. You see, we're told in the New Testament, Jesus preached the gospel. Well, we're expected to understand what that's all about. And, uh, and we think, well, how come? Well, the Jews, you see, they had a background in the Old Testament. They knew exactly what that meant. It didn't need further explanation because they knew that what Jesus was actually doing was preaching the year of Jubilee, and they knew all about that. There's a lot about that in the Old Testament. So for us, for us Gentiles, we have to do some research. We have to find out well, the origins of the gospel. Because if you want to understand the gospel, you have to look and know about the year of Jubilee. It's one of the great things in the Old Testament. That is the Old Testament foundation for the gospel. The gospel wasn't new. God had already made preparations in the Old Testament so that we would understand the gospel. Well, Jesus in Luke 4 is quoting from Isaiah 61, as I said. It's a famous prophecy of the Messiah. And Jesus was claiming that he was the fulfillment of this prophecy. He was fulfilling this prophecy through his preaching of the gospel. And what the Jews knew, but we, we miss this, is that when he described what he was doing as preaching good news to the poor and preaching the acceptable year of the Lord, we, we may not cotton on, but the Jews knew what he was saying He was talking, this is technical language, and what he was talking about was the year of Jubilee. And basically, Isaiah was prophesying that when Messiah came, he would fulfill the year of Jubilee for the human race. Jesus then claimed to be the fulfillment. And so, we've got to understand the year of Jubilee, and then we will truly understand the gospel. You see, If we just simplify what Jesus said in Luke chapter 4, take away the the minor statements and stay with his main statements, we could shorten it to this. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel, the good news, to the poor, and he has sent me to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He summarized his ministry by saying, I have come here to proclaim the year of Jubilee. And all the other little clauses, like healing the brokenhearted and delivering the captives and all of that, these were all aspects, really, of the year of Jubilee. Yes, Isaiah 61 was a prophecy that when Messiah came, he would fulfill the year of Jubilee on a grand scale for all people and restore the whole fallen condition of man. And then Jesus came along in Luke 4, and claimed to fulfill Isaiah 61. He was claiming to be the Messiah. And through the gospel, he was fulfilling the year of Jubilee. Well, having done that, we need to just see then that the major key to understanding the gospel is the year of Jubilee. And that's what I want to give to you now. Well, 
that tells us we've got to go back into the Old Testament. Leviticus 25, verse 8 to 13, is where we will find out what the year of Jubilee was all about. So let's read that, shall we? And God says to Israel, you will count seven sevens of years for yourself. Seven times seven years. And the time of the seven sevens of years shall be to you 49 years. Then you will cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound. Now, Jubilee actually means trumpet blast or trumpet of shouting, trumpet of proclamation. He says, count 49 years, then you will let the Jubilee trumpet blow. The Jubilee was a proclamation and it was a good news proclamation as we're going to see. Cause the trumpet to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. Notice it wasn't the first day of the first month. It was a special day, the Day of Atonement. You shall make the trumpet to sound throughout your land. He says, let this good news trumpet blast proclamation be sounded throughout Israel. Verse 10, you shall consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty. That's what it was. Proclaim liberty throughout all the land and to all its inhabitants. I want you to notice there's two things that are set free. First of all, the land is set free. We'll talk about that. Secondly, the inhabitants are set free. Well, he says, it shall be a jubilee for you, and each of you shall return to his possession. So in other words, some people were in slavery. They were set free from that. And also, they had lost their lands, but they were set free to, to return to their land and re to their possessions that they had lost. It was a complete restoration of everything that had been lost in their lives. When they heard the trumpet of Jubilee, they knew that the power of God, the favor of God was upon them for them to be set free from what had bound them and to rebuild their life and return to the, their lost possessions. No wonder it was good news to the poor. It says, each one of you shall return to his family. The 50th year shall be a Jubilee to you. In it you shall neither sow nor reap what grows of its own accord, nor gather the grapes of your untended vine. It was a year of rest. For it is the jubilee, it shall be holy to you. You shall eat its produce from the field. In this year of jubilee, each of you shall return to his possession. Now I'll explain all of this to you soon. And uh, verse 28 is interesting. He says, what is sold shall remain in the hand of him that bought it until in the jubilee it shall go out and he shall return to his possession. So you lost land, you lost houses, but in the Jubilee, you can go back and reclaim it. And then it, the other thing it says, he shall go out in the year of Jubilee, verse 54, he shall go out in the year of Jubilee, both he and his children with him. If they were in debt, if they're in slavery, they could go out free when they heard the Jubilee trumpet. All right. Well, every aspect of the gospel is contained in the Jubilee. It was an amazing event. It probably happened once in every person's lifetime, every 49 years. And Jubilee means trumpet blast. That would have been a noisy day. And the essence of Jubilee was that it's a proclamation of good news. And so when we hear about good news, the gospel, it automatically to the Jewish ear, they knew this was talking about Jubilee. You see, every person in Israel it was different to us here, but every person in Israel had a parcel of land. They inherited a certain piece of land when they inherited the promised land. The land belonged to them and their children. But some people ran into trouble. They ran into debts. They had to sell off their land sometimes. They even had to sell themselves into slavery sometimes because of that. And families were split up. They had to become slaves. Their lives were broken up. They lost what God intended them to have. And this is a picture of mankind, you see. God gave mankind, as in the Garden of Eden, every blessing, righteousness, peace, joy, so much God wants for us. But because of our sin, we have gone into sin, we have gone into slavery to sin and Satan, we've lost all the good things that God wanted for us. But praise God, God has a jubilee ready for us, the good news that God wants to restore us set us free from every slavery and restore us to all the blessings of God that he always wanted for us, that he'd marked out for us. So each jubilee cycle is really a picture of the general condition of mankind. 
that sin has disrupted our lives. We've lost our possessions. We've been separated from the blessings of God. We've come under the power of darkness. But Jubilee is the year of God's grace whereby God restores everything by grace to man. And so that's what God did. On the, it started on the 10th day of the seventh month. Why did it start on that day? Because that was the day of atonement. The day of atonement was the most holy day in the, in the year. And what happened on the Day of Atonement is that on that day they would make the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate sin offering that would cover all the sins of Israel for that whole year. And on that great day, and only on that day, the high priest would enter the Holy of Holies with the blood of the sacrifice and would enter in even and sprinkle the blood on the Ark of the Covenant where God dwelt in his glory. The high priest... uh, this, it was considered so holy, everyone was concerned the high priest could die. Going into the very holy of holies. And so he had bells sewn on his garments so they could hear while he was moving around, he was still alive. And uh, he had a cord tied around his foot so that if he fell down dead in the holy of holies, they could pull him out. Well, if the sacrifice was not acceptable to God, then surely the, whole, the high priest would die. And so at the Jubilee time, the sacrifice was made. The high priest entered the Holy of Holies with the blood. He sprinkled it. The glory of God would be shining in the Holy of Holies. And if the high priest didn't die, if he then reappeared out of the Holy of Holies and appeared to the people again, then everyone would know that the sacrifice had been accepted, that their sins were forgiven, that God's grace and favor was upon them again for that year. Hallelujah. And they saw the high priest appeared and they would all rejoice that their sins had been forgiven. And as the high priest came out, he would tell them, he would say, it is the acceptable year of the Lord. God has accepted the sacrifice. God's favor is upon the people. He would say, go now. And he would send the trumpeters into every town and every village. And the trumpeters would go two by two. And one would blow the trumpet the other one would herald and they would blow the trumpet and they would proclaim this is the year of jubilee it's the acceptable year of the lord the sacrifice has been slain god has accepted the sacrifice and therefore it's the acceptable year of the lord now god's favor is upon you if anyone is in debt your debts are cancelled if anyone is in sin your sins are forgiven if you're in prison you can go free if you're in slavery you can go free Your possessions that you've been separated from, they are released back to you. Go and reclaim your inheritance. Everything that you have lost is restored to you because the price has been paid. The sacrifice has been made. This is the good news to the poor. This is the acceptable year of the Lord. And that's the message of the gospel to you. Everything you've lost through sin and through the fall, God has restored to you through the blood of Jesus. And let me tell you what Jesus did. Jesus was not just a sacrifice for our sins. He was also the high priest. And Jesus took his own blood into the heavenly or holy of holies. And then he appeared again alive to his disciples. And that showed, his resurrection appearances showed that he was risen from the dead. That his sacrifice was accepted by God. And the high priest appeared alive. And then he said to his disciples, go into all the world, into all creation and preach the gospel. Blow the trumpet of jubilee to every town and village. Hallelujah. Preach the gospel. Preach the good news to the poor. It's the acceptable year of the Lord. The sacrifice has been accepted and God's grace is upon you now. If you need healing, whatever you have lost through sin, you've lost your health, you've lost your peace of mind, you've lost peace of your life. God's power is here to restore you, to set you free from the power of darkness to make you a new creation. Praise God, that's the gospel. And you know, when the trumpet sounded in in any village, they knew they could go free. Before they heard the trumpet, they couldn't go free because the power was in the proclamation. The power was in the very proclamation. And as soon as the trumpet was blasted, then although the sacrifice had been slain, they couldn't go free till they heard the trumpet. 
And when the trumpet was sounded, God's power was, was released and they could go free. If they believed the Jubilee proclamation, they, had, they were empowered to go free and claim their salvation. Praise God. And you know, I heard that the Jews, whenever they heard the Jubilee themselves, they got their own shofars out and they were to blow the trumpet themselves. And once you've heard the gospel and you've received salvation, you're to blow your own trumpet. You're to preach the gospel to your neighbors and your friends. You're to sound the trumpet of Jubilee, the good news to the poor. Wherever you're poor in your life, wherever you're lacking in your life, it's the acceptable year of the Lord. God's favor, God's power is here to save you, to bless you, to heal you. Praise God. That's the message of Jubilee. No wonder in Isaiah 52, 7, he says, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of him who bring good news. These were the good news preachers, the trumpeters who went throughout the land proclaiming Jubilee. He says, Who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things who proclaim salvation. And what was the message they preached? It's in the next chapter, Isaiah 53. Surely he has borne our sicknesses and carried our sorrows. He says he's, that he's borne our sins. Hallelujah. And by his stripes we're healed. Praise God. The sacrifice has been slain. The price is paid. And now salvation is a free gift to all people. Go preach the good news to all. Hallelujah. And if they believe the message then they can go free. Their sins, their debts are cancelled. Hallelujah. Their land that they had lost, all the blessings of God, the righteousness, joy, the peace of God is now restored to you. And you can go and you can reclaim everything that has been lost. If you're a slave, they said, you're free now. Return to your lost possessions. Claim your property. Praise God. Remember I said two things were set free? It was the year of liberty. The first thing that was set free was the people. They were set free from their slavery. Set free from their debt. Hallelujah. Whatever is binding you, is it sickness? Is it a demonic oppression? Is it a habit? Whatever is oppressing you and holding you in slavery, the jubilee message to you is, Jesus has paid the price to set you free. The power is here for you to set free. Believe the gospel and walk free from that prison in Jesus' name. And the second thing was their land was set free. They were lost from their land. They were cast out of their land. But now everything you have lost through, through the fall, God says it's released back to you now. Every spiritual blessing is ours in Christ Jesus. And we can go and reclaim our lost inheritance. Hallelujah. Jesus is our jubilee. Praise God. All, we, all they had to do, it was all grace. It was a grace, good news to the poor. All you, they had to do was believe the trumpet. They had to believe the jubilee. They had to believe the good news and they could walk out free. That's what we preach. It's the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus has been sacrificed for our sins. Hallelujah. His, our sins are forgiven and now we can go free and start a new life. Praise God. They could go free, and they could rebuild their houses. They could rebuild the lost, uh, the broken down walls of their houses. They could rebuild their lives. God's power was then, was there for them to rebuild their life. And that's what we do when we preach the gospel. We declare that it is the year of jubilee. That's what Jesus was saying. I've come to bring in jubilee for mankind. Wherever mankind is, uh, is broken down, wherever he's lost, he, he's got a broken heart, he's got a, a hurting body, he's, he's got oppression, Where, whatever he has lost, he's lost his righteousness, he's lost his peace, he's lost his health. The good news to them is that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me now. He's anointed me to, to bring deliverance and healing a new life to you. The power of God is here for you to have a new life. Praise God. And as you proclaim that, as you blow the trumpet, God's power is released. And if they believe the message, they can take hold of it and rise up and they can walk free into a new life. Preach the gospel, the good news, and let the world know that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, the sacrifice is accepted, and now it's the acceptable year of the Lord. Mm -hmm. 